Hi, everybody. I'm with uh, Jérôme uh, Perron today. Uh, Jérôme Perron is the owner and CEO of K2 Energies. Um, so K2, K2 Energies is a company that's in the um, construction space. Welcome, uh, Jérôme, to the, to the show, and thanks for, uh, for taking time out to speak to me today. Thank you, David. So um, I introduced myself. Um, I'm 45. Uh, I'm married with three kids. I live in France. Um, and maybe before I, I start talking, talking about K2 Energy uh, uh, quickly, uh, uh, let me start with some background information about myself and uh, in the context of our discussion. I used to work in financial services and I uh, made a, a quite drastic move um, a few years ago when I decided to, to move towards uh, what I would call entrepreneurship. And at that time, I, I had um, two main uh, aspirations. Uh, um, the first one is, is um, gain more freedom in a way or the other uh, by setting up my own business. At that time, I didn't know if it was uh, create something or acquire uh, a business. Uh, and the second aspiration was to increase somehow my quality of life. Uh, and, and I did that by going back to my region of origin, uh, southwest of France, where I'm closer to mountains and, and the ocean where I can practice some, uh, some uh, sports there. So now, I'm, uh, you know, like two, three years after that, I'm, I'm um, driving, a, as you said, a, a local business based in Bordeaux that I acquired in uh, 2017. Um, uh, it is specialized in what we call HVAC solutions. HVAC stands for heating, uh, ventilation, and air, air conditioning. So we're a team of 25, um, and uh, we, we actually partner with architects and with uh, various construction stakeholders. Um, and we deliver uh, what I call energy efficient solution in that field of um, you know, air conditioning, heating, where we, 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 we do it for uh, local homes and, and also office buildings or industry buildings. Great. Th thanks a lot, Jérôme, for the, for the intro and, and, and explaining that. Jérôme, I'm, I'm always, you know, in awe and kind of, I always admire people who, are, who have this ability to, to, to shift from one industry sector into another. And then more importantly, from your, your perspective, you were, you know, in the corporate world, um, and ha had a fairly senior role in the corporate role and suddenly decided to set up your own business or at least to manage your own business. So, and that, that's kind of quite impressive. And I think it's a very, very, very you know, very admirable thing to, to, to have achieved. So what was um, your defining moment where you decided, okay, I'm not going to do a startup and set up my business, but go out and acquire a business or buy a business and then manage it from, 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 from that point onwards. So what were some of the decision factors that said, no startup, but let me try and buy an existing business and then, and then, and grow it and improve it. Well, I, I, the, it didn't come that, that decision did not come overnight. I think I have to say uh, at the beginning, I was not too sure about what uh, I wanted to jump into. The only thing I was sure about is that I wanted to make that, uh, that jump. Uh, so there were some uh, pushing and pulling forces, if I if I can um, uh, uh, call it this way. So so I was belonging to an ecosystem that was uh, feeding me well. Um, so I was I was rather okay, um, but at the same time there was kind of an increasing dissonance between, um, on the one hand side, my aspiration for uh, more freedom, as I mentioned earlier. But on the other hand side, that corporate world uh, and, and some of the politics that you know that, that you can imagine that goes with the, those roles, um, and and you know I, I, I um, it took me some time to get there. But when I made that decision, uh, you know I, I remember that moment when actually I, I told my wife, uh, I'm gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna take me two years, but in two years I'm I'm. We're doing the move. So I was in based in London at that time, and uh, I was kind of uh, from that moment in time I, I got prepared and I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I actually followed a, a training uh, dedicated to uh, business acquisition, or um, and and so that I, I get to know the process. And at that time, so I put my in a way my my cap of uh, uh, project manager wow. because that was one of my former roles. 
uh, and and I you know got into it uh, and actually it there, there is a process uh, yeah. for acquiring business and you, you know uh, you know it very well actually uh, Javid because you're, you're in, in into m and uh, so so you, you know that particularly well um, and and that process is uh, in that uh, moment of I would say high personal risk uh, following a process and following that that, that, that project uh, uh, running this as a project is uh, is actually a good way to I think to uh, to limit the incomfort of the, the situation. What, 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 are, what were the, some of the key challenges that you so, faced? So the, I guess the first challenge is, is cutting the rope. So it's, uh, you know, I've, uh, as I mentioned, I, I, I was thinking a lot of it uh, over the years. And at some point I said, well, we, we, we go uh, and, uh, and there is no way, way back. Uh, so you, you, you know, in the corporate world, you risk your reputation every day, but from that moment in time, I was risking my reputation, but I was also risk, risking my, uh, money. And then when I acquired the business, I'm also risking the reputation of my company. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a, uh, big risk environment, uh, for, for my, you know, for that, my, my small word, of course, it's not, it's not big, uh, big numbers, but, uh, I think one thing that helped me a lot is that, uh, uh, concept of effectuation, um, that where, where, where you decide to say, well, I'm going to assign, uh, an amount of money and I'm going to assign some time. Like for me, it was two years and until you reach those points, just, you know, distress, you, you're not, you're not there. When you, when you reach those, uh, milestones and then you can think of maybe doing something else. But, but I think that that was, uh, the, the first aspect of it. So, Jérôme, if you're in a, in a, in a startup world, you're, you're, and then depending on how, how you enter a startup world, you're faced with the constant need to find investors and to find funding uh, as you're moving along the journey, right? Um, when you buy a business outright and you've kind of funded, you're, you don't have maybe necessarily that same challenge, but now your challenge is, how do you manage that business to growth, right? So you, did you take over a business that was performing very well or did you take over a business that it was underperforming and therefore, you know, you, you, you acquired it at a specific price point and you knew that you can improve it and then potentially grow the, the, the business and, 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 and indirectly, you know, increase its value? Yeah, it's actually a key question when when you're in that uh, that move of uh, looking for uh, businesses to acquire because there is a market for this of course um, you always have that challenge of am i good enough to take that company that is actually not very expensive but not performing well or uh, put the money to buy a cash machine and uh, yeah. and actually what i did was probably something in between uh, i took over a company that uh, was uh, uh, performing okay, uh, but but still a, a very local business where there were twelve people at that time, um, and uh, and my biggest challenge has been to uh, grow that business before even uh, before I mean uh, profitability is one thing and it's very important, but for me it was uh, first we needed to find to to reach a critical uh, size. Uh, so that we go and play in a, in a certain uh, area, in a certain court, and we're no longer, uh, I don't know the, the English word, uh, as an uh, artisan. Uh, an artisan is a good yeah. thing, but it's like kind of a, a sole trader kind of business. Uh, and now we're more in a, into a, uh, um, an area where I'm more at ease because, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're talking, we're, we're talking, uh, uh, we're dealing with, uh, you know, businesses and, uh, you know, something more that can, uh, can relate more to what I was doing previously. Um, so I'm, I'm still in the middle of it. We're, 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 we've uh, doubled the size. Actually, we, I did two acquisitions in, a, in, a, in 18 months. But there are, you know, there are always some challenges when you try to grow and, uh, and it's never over, of course. It's something that's a little bit close to my heart, the, 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 the acquisition piece. So when you bought these two small, small, fairly small size uh, companies, I, I presume, what were the challenges around integrating? Was it pretty straightforward given that it's the same product, same customer base, or were there, were there challenges? 
Yeah, I mean, strategically, it was the, the second company we acquired was more dedicated to public uh, markets, and we wanted to have some, you know, more length in our uh, orders. And uh, so there, there was kind of uh, a strategic uh, match between those companies. But then the challenge, as you, as you know better than anyone, it was the company culture that we needed yeah. to build. So, yeah, I, I, I use actually, I used a lot what uh, uh, some of the... The, the, the tools and the experience I had gained in my previous roles uh, yeah. to try to uh, build a mayonnaise that uh, that gets uh, well together, yeah. uh, and uh, and actually that part succeeded very well. We now have one uh, uh, integrated team. They all wear uniforms when they go to uh, to uh, to to work, uh, and we have a, 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 I, I, I can think. I believe a strong, a rather strong identity compared to what we those two companies individually used to okay. have. Yeah. So I guess that part were, you know went very well. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, Jérôme, a little bit sh shifting a little bit into more of the, uh, the the digital world here, right? So inevitably, consumers around us across various industries are moving towards a more digitally focused you know, um, front end or a, you know, they're going through digital transformation to meet consumer needs. Do, do you see that in your industry um, se sector and in, particularly with your type of, 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 of product? Because I know it's, a, it's very much linked to a physical world, right? But how do you see digital transformation affecting your, um, your, your world? Right. No, and, and you're right saying that uh, construction is not exactly part of the, what I would call the early adopters when it comes to technology. It's a very, uh, I would say, traditional business, but there are still some transformation going on. So first transformation is uh, for me at the, in, inside the company, uh, I'm, I'm trying to bring some technology modules uh, into the mix so that we can, uh, we can, uh, make the difference you know compared to to our competitors so for instance we have uh, we have a tool that encapsulate the um, the, uh, the 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 quotation and send it via internet to the to the client where and they can sign online with electronic signature so it's very uh, new uh, yeah. when it comes to that particular uh, business so people sometimes are uh, or customers are, can be surprised uh, some of them don't have email addresses so we have still have to use the paper and, and everything but there is an internal uh, opportunity i would say to use the existing uh, tools modular tools uh, that that uh, other businesses or other environment uh, yeah business environment uh, actually use uh, uh, on a daily basis so that's my uh, local uh, personal challenge uh, the other challenge is probably broader for construction uh, environment. Uh, there are some powerful, very powerful, actually, techn technology solutions that have been um, uh, developing over the past few years. It's not exactly uh, there yet, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking particularly of, um, of uh, you know, what we call BIM here in France. It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. building information modeling, uh, and, and this is a, a platform that allows every construction uh, business part of one project to design their uh, plans together to you know the architecture and and every stakeholder can view and change and update the project on a real-time basis so it's a, it's a very uh, integrated tool uh, but as many technologies it, it requires every stakeholder to 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 yeah to be part of it and oh, some yes. some of those stakeholders in that area uh, or marketplace are not there yet so I think it will take a few more years but once we get there when we, once we have a critical mass uh, then I think that that will change the the construction business for for long yeah I think it's, it'll make for an interesting uh, I would say um, partnership ecosystem right and a digital partnership ecosystem so I, I, I know construction is very is very very slow in that, in, in, in that regard but uh, but but hopefully moving towards it and Jérôme I had a final question uh, for you um, uh, what do you think is the most you know um, I would say interesting trend that you're seeing probably in your construction um, industry in that sector um, or, you know, what, what's the burning thing that's keeping you um, up at night? <laughs> well, actually, the, the things that keep me uh, up at night are not related to technology these days. Uh, it's more, uh, uh, yeah, 
yeah, down to the 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 day to day of the the projects and the profitability of, of the you know the few consortiums projects we have. Technology uh, is going to be an enabler, uh, and I would say it's it's rather um, a middle long term um, enabler for me than than really a short term one. So I think that. Uh, uh, the, the tool I mentioned, actually, or the technology I mentioned, uh, Beam, is 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 probably uh, I will need as a, as a, at my scale to invest into this technology because we start seeing that demand, and and on the long run, it will it will make a difference. I think. Fantastic, Jérôme. Thank you so much for uh, for taking time and for participating today. And, Thank you, Joseph. Um, Merci. Yeah. Merci beaucoup et la, la prochaine fois, je, on, on, on essaiera de le faire en français. <laughs> Avec plaisir. Salut, Javid. Salut. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.